All right, welcome to Fast Five with the Digital Learning Team, where we are looking at some bite-sized training and goals for you to use as you conquer Canvas and other technology. Again, I'm Chelsea Cody, and you can see I'm sporting my flannel as usual. You're back to the red and black, kind of the Canvas flannel. I pulled in a little blue since we have a new member coming in today. Um, <laughs> yes, yes. And I, I'm Brian. I'm excited to be back for episode four as well. We did the first trilogy of episodes like really quick, and then our world kind of exploded. <laughs> So we had to wait to start the second trilogy, you know, uh, but I am back with still with my cold brew. This time around, we finally convinced Martine to join our crazy little uh, train here. So uh, kidding, kidding. Uh, welcome, Martine, to the <laughs> podcast. Good morning, everybody. I'm excited to be here. No convincing necessary. It's always a good time to uh, spend some time talking to you guys about tech and all the different tools we're using here on our team and in Garland. Yeah. Awesome. So without further ado, Martine is going to take it away wearing her awesome tie and all. Because <laughs> yes, these days you got to make lemonade uh -huh. and uh, squeeze those lemons really hard, make a lot of lemonade. So I'm it's all a about. Fimbo, Chelsea, a fimbo. Yes. Yeah, it's uh, one of my faves. I, I probably wear this one too much. It's one of my faves. But I'm a big believer that yellow represents hope. And, you know, no matter what challenges you have, you can overcome them. So um, this is one of my faves. I wear it a lot for that reason. So I'll go ahead and um, thank you. <laughs> All right. So the first tip, the first tip I want to talk about is your sections and what you can do with sections, especially when you created your own course. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit about what you can do with sections with your sync courses. So to access sections, um, you would go home, then you would go to settings. Then when you get the settings, it'll look like this, and then you'll click on sections. And so essentially what sections do is they give you an opportunity to break large classes into smaller groups. So for example, if you have a band program, which sometimes a high school band program has 360 kids, well, you may want to create sections based on um, woodwinds, brass instruments, high brass, low brass, and this is one way you do that. Um, if you're in one of the Skyward Sync courses, you may notice that your classes are already broken up into sections. Let me show you an example. So if you've got one of the sync courses, it'll be broken up by period if you're on the secondary level. Um, it may be broken up a little bit different in the elementary school levels. But in order to access these sections or to create a section, if you're creating your own course, you would simply hit this plus symbol. You would give it a name. So let's say, for example, I'm, I'm working with SPED and I want one course for all of my SPED students to be in. I may name a section by student name. That way, when I assign work, I can assign it by section. And that's the only student that gets to see that content. So that's an ex one, one really good way to use uh, sections. We also have this guide, and it'll be in our description um, to kind of walk you through how to develop those um, sections, but it's real easy to do. Like, it doesn't take much. Now, from there, the next question is, well, if I can assign work by a specific person, how do I do that? So that's my second tip. When we get to assignments, and I want to create assignment, an assignment, And I would fill out all of this information at the top, but I wanna really focus on this last part. I'm gonna delete this everyone. And do you see how John Doe has his own specific section? That's exactly what I would do. I would assign this assignment only to him. He's the only person that could see it because he's the only person in that section. And so we'll also have a guide that shows you how to do that as well. But I did wanna just let you know that this is a great way uh, to work with providing modifications, differentiation in your classroom, or again, if you're working in a large program, after school programs, and you wanna organize kids by specific groups and assign 
things or make communications by specific groups, this is a great way to do that. Blowing Martina. minds over here. <laughs> yeah, Martine, that's so good. I love what you were saying about the modification. Like, even if you're not, you know, a SPED teacher, but you have students in there that, mm -hmm. I don't know, let's say extra time. Well, you could create a section for students who have that accommodation. Mm -hmm. and you assign, okay, this due date for the same, even if it's the same assignment, you know. Yep. And if their only modification is extended time, you could give an extended due date to that section. That's a great idea. You know what that just spurred me to think about? We have coming up that first week of October, the um, Garland ISD intercession. Like mm. maybe you have kids within your class that are going to mm. the first fall intercession mm. and you create a section of your intercession students. Oh, Ooh, that's a know. great idea. I don't know how that will look. So that's totally off the cuff, literally off my cuffs. Um, but <laughs> it, it is really, I could totally see that working. Um, Martine, that was a great walkthrough. Also a beautiful homepage on your canvas. Those buttons yeah. look well, so nice. Thank you. Um, our third Maybe YouTube today, video <laughs> later. Oh my gosh, right? All the YouTube <laughs> videos, probably I pull my stuff from Canvas Commons because people have these beautiful designs already. I know we talked about it in the last episode, but uh, you know, as a teacher, we beg, borrow, not steal, steal with permission, right? But definitely grab some of those things. We harvest. <laughs> harvest. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's way better than the word steal. Steal has such a bad uh, connotation. But course, also, um, our I discovered the other day that when farmers get chickens, they are calling it like I'm harvesting chickens. So it's not necessarily a good thing, too. Like, it can also mean you know, bad. So, but I, it sounds nice. I was going to let you finish that sentence. I was going to see where that was going to go, Brian Dean. I, was, I, I wasn't going. sure. How <laughs> we're going to edit that in post. <laughs> <laughs> Our third tip, uh, without further ado, uh, just like any good second trilogy, you know, we're a little bit of Star Wars fans over here. Um, you kind of redo or recon, like if you've seen the most recent Star Wars, uh, they redid a lot of things like between movie to movie. So uh, we're going to recon a little bit of a previous episode because from our last episodes, we told you our world exploded a little, like the Death yeah. Star a little bit. Um, but we have had to talk about how Google and Canvas are connected because Google, Google and Canvas had this awesome announcement, really phenomenal for us. But we are seeing all of these changes in live right? We're working with students, so we're seeing these live. So we wanted to talk about the new release of the Google Assignments LPI. Now, the old Google Drive Cloud Assignments LTI, so the one that we were previously using as an external tool on our assignments for students to get their own copy of Google Apps, like when they're working on a Google Slide or a doc, and we want them to edit and turn back into us, that will eventually, I'm going to say eventually, disappear. So what we're going to go over now would be really good for you to start transitioning into using, but it's not immediate, right? The rug's not going to be ripped out under your feet. Um, but we want to go ahead and look at how we would use it. You'll see a lot of the steps are the very same steps you would take whenever you are using the previous Google Cloud assignment. All right, excuse me. Yeah, Google Cloud assignment, Google Drive cloud assignment. Um, very first thing your student in you would want to do, and we talked about this in, a, in our previous trilogy, if you will, and it hasn't changed, is going in and registering your drive. So I'm not going to walk through that. But if you haven't seen that, check that out. We also have a click sheet that we're going to include in our show notes to share with your students to walk through their own. So I'm going to go ahead and model how you would use the cloud assignments. So I'm going to go straight to my assignments. Yeah. Wait, so, wait, so I just want to, so the kids would also authorize their own. I just want folks to hear that as well. Yes. That's and important. we've had a, a ton of issues with kids getting stuck in that authorization whenever yeah. they're using the Google cloud assignments. Right. And this new update is, is helping a lot with that. The authorization is better. Okay. And it also allows you to view um, student work in progress. So if you haven't seen our newsletter or you haven't seen the I3 weekly update, you can really dig in and we're going to include some resources to, so that you can see what this looks like live because I'm here in our Fast 5 sandbox. And because it's a sandbox, we don't have students. There are no students in this course. 
So some of what I'm going to talk about and where you would see it, you can imagine. And if you're listening, you're already imagining, I guess. Oh, you're saying if they're listening, they're not seeing any of this anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're watching on YouTube, it's a little different. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and add an assignment from our assignment page. And I'm going to label this one Google Assignment Practice. And I just want you to know, if you're not watching this, me talking and typing at the same time with people watching never goes well. So I miss I mistyped practice about four times. I feel like that's very important for you to know for some reason. Oh, I don't can't believe we didn't even mention this. It is August 19th, which is the oh, birthday no. of one of our very important yes. people. So if you're watching this past August 19th, which you probably will, uh, it is Angie Cheatham's birthday. So you are right. welcome to give her a Yay. happy belated birthday. Everybody go to Twitter <laughs> and at her. I mean, let's just flood her timeline. Even if you're watching this a week later, it'd be hilarious. Yes. <laughs> so hey, I it. heard it was your birthday on August 19th. I'm watching this <laughs> on September 1st. Hey, I celebrate all month, so um, yes. I consider it a month-long celebration. Truth. As it should be. You deserve it. We all <laughs> deserve it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Who knows what date it is anyways right now with quarantine time? I mean, it, it could very well have been August 19th two days ago. <laughs> It's a real thing. So right now I'm inside my assignment. I'm editing it. If I wanted within our new RCE, that rich content editor, I could give some pre-direction. I could add a video of me walking through the cloud assignment before my kids even open it. But I'm going to go down and I am going to choose the submission type. And this is very similar to what we did with the previous Google LTI. So we're choosing that external tool, except this time when I go to find, I am going to look for the Google assignments, and then it has in parentheses LTI 1.3. That is the one that we're going to choose. No longer are we going to use that Google Drive cloud assignment, but I'm going to choose Google assignments LTI. Once I choose that LTI, it's going to ask me which account I want to use. So I'm using my Cody account, and I just realized that I am presenting a window, and you cannot see the pop-up. So I'm going to switch my presentation to my full screen so you can see this pop up. Okay, so what we have now is a pop up that looks to me and Martina and Brian, you can tell me if I'm crazy on this. It looks very similar to Google Classroom. Yep. Like it's got the same kind of layout, just slightly different wording on here. So you can choose to do the originality report or not. Um, if I was at the secondary level and my kids are writing an essay, or if I'm at the seventh grade level, when I was doing seventh grade, um, the writing test there, and I'm having my kids write multiple paragraphs, I might choose this originality. But if I'm in elementary, third grade, fifth grade, they're only writing um, a couple paragraphs at a time, I can check most of that plagiarism myself. You don't have to turn this on. This is an option that you have. The important thing here is we're gonna attach a file and it says right underneath files, make a copy of attached files for each of your students to edit and submit. And once I choose this file, you're going to see the verbiage is very similar to Google Classroom. So I'm hey, going Chelsea, to Yeah. That plagiarism piece, it shows up on the student end too. So when the teacher turns it on, the kid can also check the plagiarism for themselves. I thought that was really cool. Sorry about that. No, that's awesome. Kind of like um, turn it in, how turn mm -hmm. it in, how much plagiarism. Mm -hmm. it, it really is. It's a great tool and it's just, it's automatic. So yep. something that's super easy, helpful for our students. Um, I just added a random Google Doc here. Um, and you can see it says each student will get a copy, which is awesome. I see right there. That's the verbiage that we had on Google Classroom too. I didn't have to go and click um, how they would view it or not, because this is an assignment and the LTI is looking at it and saying, you want the kid to edit it. So I'm going to go ahead and attach that. It's there. I can set my due date. If I want to use the Google rubric, I can, but I'm going to click create. Now, the one thing I won't be able to model here is, um, and I'm selecting, I'm not going to be able to model what it looks like on the student side. Because remember, it's connected to a Google account. So I don't have a demo account there for it to practice with for you to see. But those resources we're going to include in our show notes, they walk through the student side and the teacher side. And I'm going to go ahead and give it a due date and click save. I also load mine in a new, in a new tab. 
because sometimes Google doesn't embed perfectly within Canvas and it's okay if it's opening in a new tab because yes. it's within the Canvas in like in structure. So you'll see even when it opens in a new tab and I'll show you this in a second on the teacher side, um, the URL still has Canvas in it. So mm -hmm. even though they're in a new tab, they're not outside of Canvas. I love this. Thank you for saying that. Can really help kiddos on a variety of devices to launch in a new tab yeah, or new window. And so mine's loading right now. And just like sure. Brian's saying, I clicked load in a new tab, but it says, you can see right here, sure assignments.google.com, but it is the, the students. When they see this in a new tab, it'll say garland.isd in structure. And then when my students start working and I will, I can see them here. Or if a student has turned them in and you use the previous Google Drive, you would click um, speed grader and then you would see student submissions here. So that's just a little bit, a little bit being the keyword about our Google LTI, our brand new recon of episode three. I love it. I Google, love it. Google Assignments LTI is kind of like the, uh, she's the Ray, right? The Ray <laughs> rising out of nowhere to <laughs> stay here. I'm sure we're going to have somebody listen to our Star Wars references. And even though we love it so much, they're going to um, correct our metaphors. But that's okay. No. That's okay. That's okay. Um, and then you'll have folks like me who have no idea what you're referring to <laughs> yep. that are going to feel like you're experts and you know exactly what you're talking about. So it's all good. You're going to get both. <laughs> Comments are turned off for that reason. Like, cannot, I don't want Star Wars fans getting mad in the comments. Like, it's not productive. No, 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 no anger. It's all love in the, the world oh. of Star Wars. I would hope. I would Thank hope. <laughs> that's, a, that's a story that's all about hope. So they True. should be. Should so be. we're going to talk about tip number four, which... um. I thought this is really cool thing. So I'm really excited to share about it. I'm going to show my, um, let's see if I can get it just right. And I'm assuming that the letters are probably flipped for you guys, right? Um, are they showing correctly? Right, they're flipped, right? They're the wrong way. Oh, you're, no, you're deleted. They're, they're correct. They're correct. They're correct. Uh, for me. Because I think oh, okay, Google, perfect. Google does it automatically, I think. Okay, perfect. So Google does it automatically, but sometimes when you're working from like your standard um, webcam, that kind of thing, these numbers will be flipped or these letters will be flipped. So I wanted to show you um, if you're just recording from just your tradi traditional old webcam and these and you see that this is flipped, I want to show you how you can record content where it will correct it for you. So we're going to use one of my all-time favorite tools called Flipgrid. I love ah! Flipgrid. If you don't have the Flipgrid fever, then I don't know what is going on because <laughs> Flipgrid is one of the most powerful tools out there to give your students voice. Um, to give them choice in how they communicate. And now I must say, they uh, about two years ago, they did a partnership with Microsoft and it has just revolutionized what they've been able to do to empower students and give them voice. So um, here's my tip for today. If you are recording yourself using something other than um, Google Meet and you're noticing that your the words that are coming across the screen are flipped, I recommend you go to flipgrid.com. You uh, log in with your Garland ISD credentials, 100% free, and you create what's called a short. Okay, so when we talk about shorts, um, they have you have about 10 minutes to record yourself. And when I go to this options menu, notice, and it may show up now, I can... Here we go. I can flip it. All right. So that allows me to Whoa. flip. So that you see, normally when you're recording from a webcam, it will show up like this. Okay. All right. But when we flip it, it'll be right. Okay. So I love that. But 
I'm going to take like just a few seconds to show you a few other things. As your students to begin to continue to show up to your morning meetings, continue to engage with you um, in asynchronous and synchronous learning, you're going to have to jazz it up. You're going to have to continue to give them a new and fresh experience. That's how you're going to keep them engaged. So I've got a couple of effects that I want to show you that you also have. You can do fun filters. You can even like completely blur your screen. And students have access to all of these same filters. Uh. You can add a frame. How cool would it be to add a specialized frame to maybe celebrate um, your students or some milestone within your class? Um, you can be in the deep bottom of the ocean if you're doing mm. a, you know, a unit on um, marine life. You know, the kids are heavily into the unicorns. I think they would definitely enjoy getting to see this unicorn. <laughs> and then, th okay, so this is like the one I probably am most, ex two that I'm most excited about. Um, you can add text. Okay. You can change your, back you can change the text background. And then let me see if I can find this other one that I really like. Okay, so I'm gonna add a whiteboard. And if you notice for my math people, there's also a dot grid and a graph, so you can also embed those pieces. But when I add that whiteboard, do you see where you have this split screen? Uh, so Get while I'm recording, town, Martin. right? While I'm recording my lesson, I can then use my text to type. Where's our fireworks soundboard right That's here? Right? I, I'm done. I, I don't have a tip for today. That's it. Or, or I can <laughs> draw, later. which I really like. So as you're going through, so while you're creating your video, you can draw, you can create images. Like you just have a whole lot of options here. I also found out that I can actually do all this creation beforehand, then press play and talk through it. So you can do it both ways. You can do it live where you're talking and you're modeling, or you can put everything up, all your filters, all your effects the way you want to, and then you can record. So you've got two options there. So just wanted to show you guys um, these options that you had, um, but specifically the flip, and then some engagement piece pieces just to keep your kids involved and engaged. Because again, as we move into the year, we've got to keep it fresh. We've got to keep things moving. Um, and you want to stay on the cutting edge of being able to do that. And then, Martine, correct me if I'm wrong, but it downloads, right? Like, I can download yes. the video. Yes. Oh, yes. I, I'm so sorry. I left that out. So once you've created your video, you can download it. Let me show you. And you can upload that video. I'll take this one I did the other week. So when I click on it, there's a cloud. Oh, let me double back so you can make sure you guys see that. So this is one I've already made. I can click on this cloud button. I can download it. And then I can go back to Canvas, go to my course, um, go to Studio, rather. Oh, man, my studio isn't working today. No. Of course, it's showing out. <laughs> yeah, just because there we go. Okay. And then I can actually add this video into my studio. And if you're not familiar with studio, studio actually gives you the option of seeing how much of a video a student watched. Um, did they watch all of it? Some of it gives you a lot of data. You can attach this in your pages. You can put it in assignments. Like it just gives you a ton of flexibility as far as seeing um, students' interactions with the video content that you've created with them. So I can add it there in studio, and then let me let it finish. This is just simply amazing, Martine. This is just yes. simply amazing. <laughs> I really like this tool. So my video is done. So then when I'm in a course,
and let's say I want to create an assignment. And again, you can add studio content in all kinds of places, not just assignments. But if I wanted to add it to an assignment, and let's say I go here. Oh, I gotta find it. And I click on uh, Canvas Studio. Uh-oh. Let me go here on the little plug. And then I want to go to Canvas Studio. It's being complicated right now. Doesn't it, it know that we are recording a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> That's so what we if, you're, <laughs> if you're just listening to this and you're not able to see what Martine's doing, there are we're gonna have show notes in the co in the mm -hmm. the description of the video. So uh, we'll have links on how to do what she's doing for sure. I know it's dead air if you're just listening. Yeah, we're sorry about that. Y'all know how tech works sometimes. So then, you know, I don't really want students to comment on this video. So I'm going to turn this off. And then I hit embed. And now that video, my instructions, my mini lesson will now be embedded into the assignments part of um this uh, assignment. Students, if you have them work in Flipgrid and you give them the option to download, they can do this as well. So they can take, do all the fancy stuff in Flipgrid, download it, and then upload it into, um, oh, it's not going to let me do it without adding that. That's okay. This is That's awesome. Okay. I mean, so guys, if y'all didn't get something out of that that Martine shared, I don't know what to say. I mean, that was like 10 tips in, in one tip. So that was incredible stuff. So I think we're done for the day on that. Like, I mean, I don't, I mean, like literally, <laughs> so basically full circle, Martine did a flip grid short, okay? Not a grid, like a short, okay? She downloaded it and then she embedded it in Canvas. So she was able to take all that magic that she did on Flipgrid and embed it mm -hmm. in Canvas, which was incredible, like full circle right there. That was awesome. That was awesome. So my so the last thing I which I don't even I don't even know why I'm doing this, but anyway. So oh, no, I think uh, you should, because it's five. <laughs> I mean, okay, we got this is like we gotta 50. do five. Right, our A1 point. for our eight uh type A personalities are not gonna be able to live it out if we did not do five. That's true. That's so true. Okay, so number five point ten. Okay. <laughs> 5.1. Sorry to my math people. Comments are turned off. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> uh, 5.10. Anyway. Okay, so I also want to talk about Flipgrid, and this is in a different way. So here's how my food is different. So I want to provide just my, I want to be completely honest. No one's getting paid for Flipgrid at all. Like, <laughs> not at all. But my, my uncle is a college professor, okay? Like, and when I say college professor, I mean, he's like a dean of instruction. Like he is the quintessential history professor, okay? They're all having to learn new stuff. So we were, you know, together this summer, socially distanced, wearing masks. And he said, Brian, if you had to tell me the best ed tech tool of the last year, what would it be? And I'm like, well, Seriously, I mean, it was not even a thought. I said Flipgrid. It was not even a hesitation. I said Flipgrid. And anyway, so I just want to share that. I think it's all, we all think it's awesome um, to use. And I love how this next tip. So uh, the next tip is that Flipgrid uh, will completely embed into Canvas so that your kiddos don't have to go out to flipgrid.com. You can just put it right there in your course. So I'm gonna put some notes up on the screen while I kind of talk about it. So it's called, it's a Canvas LTI integration. So you're hearing that term LTI a lot this in this episode. So like Chelsea talked about the LTI of Google Assignments. So Canvas has an LTI. So this link that I'm displaying right now um, is from Canvas and it walks you through step-by-step step, how to add the Flipgrid app to your Canvas course, okay? Step-by-step, step. and it gives you that secret key 
that you need to know. Like you have to put in a consumer key and a shared secret and to make it work. It outlines how to do that. So of course this link is going to be in the show notes uh, below the video. Uh, but I want to kind of show you what it's going to look like. So inside, so this is my Flipgrid account. Okay. When you, when you click on your account, there's an integrations button, which you'd probably never use before if you haven't used an LMS or anything. So this is how you can add a new integration. Again, it's all covered in that document on how to do it. So you generate an integration through Canvas, you get your consumer key, your shared secret, then you hop over to Canvas and you add it in, okay? So once you add it in, I wanna show you kind of how simple it is. So you're gonna create an assignment and I might call it, you know, flip grid assignment. Maybe it's gonna be due like Monday morning or something like that. Um, and just like you go down to um, a sub the assignment type or submission type, you're gonna pick external tool just like you would for a Google assignment except this time you've already connected Flipgrid. So it should be there in the list. Again, it won't be there if you haven't added it in. So when you add Flipgrid and say select, it's gonna attach it again, that tip of loading it in a new tab might be helpful for some of your kids, but I'm a big fan of giving the kids context. If you just have an assignment with Flipgrid embedded and they have no idea what they're supposed to say, it really won't help them, right? So in the rich content editor, the RCE that we keep talking about episode after episode, give the kids some guidance, okay? So I'm gonna say, please answer this question in the Flipgrid, you know, and maybe we wanna talk about empathy. Like how can we show empathy to others during this stressful time? I just want to let listeners know that Brian also misspelled a, a word. So I'm not the only one that that happens to. Just want to clarify that for everybody listening that I can't see this happening. <laughs> How dare you, Chelsea? <laughs> How dare you? We're going to edit that all out in post. Okay. okay. <laughs> so give them, give them, uh, you know, an assignment. You can choose to grade it or not. I'm going to say like not graded for right now. And then when you save and publish it, the Flipgrid um, will embed there inside of the assignment. I know you can't see it here, but if you went to student view, um, you would see the Flipgrid um, embedded in the assignment. Let's do that real quick. And when you open it up, oh, it's because I'm in student view. Anyway, sorry guys. It's If you're watching on YouTube, it's not popping up, but it's because we're in student view. So that's it. That's how it would work. So they would actually use the flip grid right there in Canvas and not have to go out to another assignment. So that's really, that's my tip. So lots of gold nuggets today. Um, so yeah, thanks for listening. I think that, is that it for today? Yeah. Well, and I was just going to add to if if you're hearing flip grid for the first time, we're so glad that we could bring that to your attention, but we'll have some resources in um, our show notes as well for getting started with Flipgrid. So if what we're showing you is, is a couple of steps down the road, just like Martine always says, we eat an elephant one bite at a time. So if that's something that's new for you, focus on our other tips. Come back to that later. The beauty that's, of these recorded podcasts is you can watch them a million times. Eating an elephant. <laughs> yeah, one just, bite at a time. It's mm, only a ton or two. <laughs> just a little bit oh, all we can do all we want to do a little bit at a time and i really want to emphasize that that's so important about all of this and just technology in general like you know it's taken i always tell people i was an english teacher i taught english pen paper books so it took a lot of iterations of succeeding and then a lesson just bombed just flat out bomb in my face i remember spending hours assigning assignments wrong in google classroom and so i three like hours and it's that process where you're really going to get the kind of learn digital learning environment you really want it's not through having consistent success that's just yeah. not how it works it's true it's, practice makes progress if you yeah. will so yeah. 
with that, we are wrapping up our fourth episode, the start of our second trilogy. Um, thanks for joining in today. We are so glad not only that you could join us, but Martine was here as well. Remember, follow us um, both on Twitter and Instagram. Okay, we got at digital GISD. And check out our website. A lot of information that we're sharing with you, we have embedded already in our digital learning website. Um, our next episode... We are still wanting to hear from you. If you have questions as a listener, you can put those directly into Anchor or you can send us an email. Um, and if you're in Garland ISC, you have our email um, and mention that it's a question for us to cover on our next podcast. So you can mention it there. You can tweet at us and say, hey, can you talk about this thing? I'd love to see this walk through. Um, and we're using a lot of that to sculpt what we are talking about right now. So if you want to be part of our user experience, uh, let us know what your questions are. Um, even if it's just about what kind of cold brew Brian has today, we love yeah. hearing feedback. <laughs> Man, shout out again to at <laughs> GRCTC fashion. I am drinking that cold brew. Again, I'm not saying the name, not getting paid. I am drinking that brand of cold brew right now. And it's phenomenal. That little taste of New Orleans. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you guys again. We will see you very soon. Bye, Bye guys. guys.